Hi everybody. So we've been dealing with, in this unit, we've been dealing with how to simplify exponential expressions uh, using positive, negative, and zero exponents, both integers and fractions. But we haven't talked about how to actually solve exponential equations. So we're going to talk about one specific type of exponential equation in this video, and then we're going to expand on it the next video. Um, where we're actually going to solve equations that have exponents in them. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, let's do a simple one. What if I have 2 to the x equals 2 to the third? Should be pretty straightforward, I hope you can see. 2 to the x equals 2 to the third. In order for these things to be the same, x has to equal 3, doesn't it? Because if x equals 3, we'd have 2 to the third equals 2 to the third, and they're the same. That's actually 8 equals 8. Okay? We can actually expand that a little bit. Let's talk about what about 3 to the 2x equals 3 to the 12th. Well, if you, we use the same kind of reasoning, and that is if we've got that same base there, 3 and 3, in that case it was 2's, in this case it's 3's, then if the base is the same, don't these two things have to be the same? Sure they do. So we can set 2x equal to 12, divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 6. That's a 6. Okay? What we're actually doing is we're using a property. It is called the 1 to 1 property of exponents. The 1 to 1 property. All right, good. Let's go ahead and write it in algebraic form. It says if x to the a equals x to the b, then a has to equal b. There are some limitations on this property. x can't be 0, x can't be 1, uh, but otherwise it works just fine, and it's a really, really handy rule. So what it says is the following. If we have one term on each side of our equation, and the two bases are the same, in this case they're x, we can set our two exponents equal to each other. So let's take a look at a bunch of examples, and then we'll make things a little more complicated. And then in the next video, we'll make them even more complicated. Still not too bad, though. 5 to the x plus 2 equals 5 to the 2x minus 6. Okay? Our 1 to 1 property says that if our two, uh, we have two exponential expressions, one on each side of an equal sign, and the bases are the same, we can set the two exponents equal to each other. So let's do that. We have x plus 2 equals 2x minus 6, and then it just becomes a pretty straightforward Algebra 1 kind of problem, doesn't it? Subtract x. We get 2 equals x minus 6. Add 6 to both sides. We get x equals 8. So x equals 8. Let's do a bunch more of these, and then we'll, then we'll complicate matters just a little bit. What if I have 4 to the 3x minus 2 equals 4 to the 5x plus 3? Why don't you give this a shot? Go ahead, turn off the video, figure it out, and turn the video back on, and we'll work through it. And Hopefully you've got the answer correct. All right, here we go. Single term on each side, both the same base, so we can set the two exponents equal to each other. Subtract 3x from both sides. I get negative 2 equals 2x plus 3. Subtract 3 from both sides. I get negative 5 equals 2x. Divide by 2 x equals negative 5 halves. Okay? Pretty straightforward, right? One-to-one -one property. Not terribly demanding, but it does get a little tricky, unfortunately, as algebra problems tend to do. What if I have this? 2 to the x times, that's a times, 2 to the x plus 3 equals 2 to the 5x. Okay, well, we've got a problem here. And the problem is that our 1 to 1 property 
requires that we have a single exponential expression on each side, but unfortunately we've got two of them over here instead of one. Everything's to the same base, that's a good thing, but we've got two expressions. So the question is, do we have a technique that we can combine these two expressions into one? And the answer is, of course we do. We learned the product rule. If you remember correctly, the product rule said that if you have two expressions, same base, multiplied together, you add the exponents. Remember that? Sure you do. So what can we do here? We can say 2 to the x plus x plus 3. We're multiplying two expressions, same base, so we're going to add those two exponents together. Equals 2 to the 5x. Let's simplify that. We get 2 to the x plus x is 2x plus 3 equals 2 to the 5x. Now we're all set. We've got an expression on each side of the equation. Same base, 2. We can set these two exponents equal to each other. 2x plus 3 equals 5x. Subtract 2x. Divide by 3. x equals 1. Okay, so if you don't have a single expression on each side, you need to make a single expression before you can use this property. We also have problems like this. How about, let's say, base 6 to the, oh, let's use c as a variable this time. 6, over, six to the 4c power over 6 to the c minus 2 power equals 6 to the 8c power. And we're going to solve for c. Now again, we can't use the one-to-one -one property immediately because we have two expressions on this side, not one, and we have to have one. But again, we have a quotient rule which will help us simplify that. Remember the quotient rule? Quotient rule said that if we have two expressions to the same base and we're dividing them, we subtract the exponent. Six minus two is four. So we can do the same thing here. So that's 6 to the 4c minus, now be very careful, we are subtracting this entire thing, not just the c. So you need to make sure c minus 2 is in parentheses. If I were to write this as my exponent on this side, I would get 3c, 4c minus c is 3c minus 2, which would be wrong because what we're going to end up doing here is distributing this negative to both of these terms and we're actually going to end up with a plus 2. So pay no attention to that. You know what? Let's erase it. Pay no attention to that. It's wrong. Don't do it that way. Never, 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 never. Okay. So here we go. We've got 6 to the 4c minus c minus 2 because of our quotient rule equals 6 to the 8c. So I have 6 to the 4c minus c plus 2, when we distribute that negative, equals 6 to the 8c. 4c minus c is 3c plus 2 equals 6 to the 8c. Now I can use my one-to-one -one property because I have the same base. So 3c plus 2 equals 8c. Subtract 3c from both sides. 2 equals 5c and then divide by 5c equals 2 fifths. Okay? One last wrinkle here. And this is actually going to lead us into the, our part two of the one to one property. And that is what if I were to give you, keep it as simple as possible here, 8 to the x plus 3 equals 1. Hmm. Well, now we have a problem, don't we? And the problem is that the one-to-one uh, -one property requires that we have the same base on both sides. We don't. So what should we do? Well, let's look at it. Can we write 1 as a base 8? If we can, we can use our one-to-one -one property, can we? 8 to the what power gives me 1? Think about it. We talked about it fairly recently on one of our more recent videos in this particular unit on exponents. 8 to the what power gives you 1? 
zero, eight to the zero power, anything to the zero power other than zero is one. So I can write that as eight to the zero instead of one. So now they're the same base, x plus three equals zero, x equals negative three. That's a really good lead in to our next video. So tune in to the one-to-one -one properties of exponents two, the sequel, and we'll take a look at some more examples of what happens when bases are not the same, and we want to use the one-to-one -one property. Thanks.